Whoa! Well, I lied. Yeah, I lie. And what I lied about is that I told you that we're going to worry about the calculations in a video portion that will be located in another part of Blackboard. But, you know, I forgot something. And that is the pre-lab questions are going to ask you some of these calculations. So I'm going to have to at least present to you the type of calculation that you're going to have to do. And then in that folder separately in Blackboard, you're going to find a group of videos that will talk about the spreadsheet and the proper way to set this up. So we need to talk about the type of calculation that you will need. And that calculation is going to focus on the refractive index numbers. Okay, so there's an equation here and the equation is going to look like this. Okay, it's going to be your measured refractive index equal to x times the refractive index of 1 plus 1 minus x times the refractive index of the other. All right, so I'm going to write this here on the screen. We're going to do the refractive index that you have gotten in the lab, and we're going to clean this up a little bit. We're not going to make it look as all sciencey. We're going to simplify it down. And then we're going to take x times the refractive index of your first one plus 1 minus x times the refractive index of your second one. Now, the reason that we have an A and a B is that we're going to assume that in the vial that I have, there's a liquid. And we're only going to assume that there's two components. That's it. These boiling points are so far apart that if you do have contamination, and you probably will, they are far enough separated that only two of them will be into your container. And those two, one is going to be labeled as B, one's going to be labeled as A. And it really depends on where you are with the refractive index and the point in the fractionation that you are. So what do I mean by that? Well, the first component that will come over will probably be acetone. So you can say that acetone is your first component in one of the vials. And then the next one that will come over will be cyclohexane because that has a boiling point closer to acetone. And we're just going to pretend like toluene's not even in there. It can't be. The boiling point's too high, and it's too early on in the fractionation, so toluene's not came over yet. It's just acetone. It's just cyclohexane, and that's it. All right? Well, you've already done some background information. Some of the background information, you've got refractive index for the pures. Okay? So that number will go here if I've labeled acetone as A, and this refractive index will go in for there if I've labeled cyclohexane as B. Well, later on in the fractionation process, what happens is that all the acetones came over now, so there's no more to collect. So that two component system later on in the fractionation will be cyclohexane that you will be collecting and some of that will be toluene in there as well. So now toluene makes its presence known. Well, you can call this one A and you can call this one B. Doesn't really matter. But the second half of the fractionation process still will only have two components. But you need to t title one of them as A and one of them as B to keep them straight. All right? And that's typically how I do it. So that means in the second step or the second half when that begins to happen, cyclohexane is represented as A. That will go in for A in the equation. Toluene is represented as the B. So that refractive index will go in for B in the equation. The refractive index here, this is what you saw in the lab when you did the measurement of the vial. Okay, this is your actual readout. So the whole purpose of this is to get percentages here. That's the whole reason behind it. All right, so let's kind of do an example. So here's the example. On the screen, let's say that I take one of the vials that I have obtained in the lab throughout my fractionation, and that vial had a refractive index read of 1.4041, and I wrote that number down in my lab book. Okay, well, that was collected very early on in the fractionation process. 
and it looks like 1.4041. That would look like it comes in between these two refractive indexes, right? 1.35 for acetone, 1.42 for cyclohexane. So that probably tells me that some of this is not pure, right? It's not a pure sample. I know that. But some of it is acetone, some of it's cyclohexane, and I need to know how much in each one. I need to know what the percentage is. And this equation up at the top of the screen will help me determine what that percentage is. So the way that I would solve this problem is it says I take my refractive index of the vial, 1.4041. Set that equal to x times the refractive index of my first one, 1 1.3591, plus 1 minus x times the refractive index of my second component, and here my second component is 1.4264. So you need to solve this equation. We're going to clean it up, make a mathematician happy. 1.4041 is equal to 1.3591 one times x plus 1.4264, and then that's 1.4264 times 1, right? And 1.4264 times negative x, which will be negative 1.4264x. So we need to solve it uh, on the uh, right-hand side of the equation. So we're going to clean it up. I'm not going to skip any steps for you, so that way you can follow along pretty well. So, I'm going to take 1.3591, and I'm going to subtract 1.4264. And that gives me negative 0 0.0673. So, I'm just simplifying the equation. 1.4041 equals 1.4264 minus... 0.0673x. All right, now I need to solve for x here. So in order to do that, I'm going to subtract 1.4264 from each side. So 1.4041 minus 1.4264. And that gives me a negative 0 0.0223. All right. I need to solve for x and get it by itself. Well, this is 0 0.0673 times x. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide here. So negative 0 0.0223 divided by a negative 0 0.0673, and that gives me 0 0.33. All right, well, this is a percentage, right? So that means I have to take this number, and I have to convert it to a percentage and the way that I do that is I multiply by 100, and that will give me around 33.1%. So that means X is 33.1%. Well, the X number went along with my first component, and my first component was acetone. So that means 33.1% here is acetone in that sample, and the remaining right? The remaining portion, which is around 66%, is going to be my cyclohexane. So that is how we do these calculations. And that's what you will be doing for every single sample fraction that you will collect in this lab. So up at the top, quick review, you've got an equation. This is the refractive index of your sample. This is the refractive index of one of the components. It's either going to be an acetone cyclohexane mix or it's going to be a cyclohexane toluene mix. 
We're just going to assume only two components are going to get collected. And that's it. We simplify it down. So that's going to be your first one. And then this is a refractive index of your second component, whatever that is. Here's your refractive index for acetone. Here's your cyclo or your refractive index for cyclohexane. Those numbers do not change. Those are what the pures are, and those numbers go in for those values. Okay? Now, the issue here is that some of you might have a question, and you might say, well, what if I take the actual acetone pure that you've given me in the lab, and can I use that refractive index? And the answer is absolutely. That's actually what you need to be using. So don't be using the book number. You need to actually take the acetone pure, put it on the refractive index, and read it. And that's what you're basing all of these choices off of. That's the number that you need to be using. So it might not be 1.3591, but it might be 1.3587. And if so, that's the number that you need to be plugging into this equation because that represents the acetone that we have used to make your sample with. All right, so pretty important. Same way with cyclohexane. Here, 1.4264 is the book value. But the cyclohexane that we have might not be completely pure. And when you run it, you might get 1.4261. That's the number that you need to be using into the equation. All right? So those are where your refractive indexes go, and you solve the equation for x. And in order to do that, you need the distributive property. Right? 1.4264 times 1 and 1.4264 times negative x. And then simplify the equation down, subtract or add the constants on both sides of the equation, and then divide or multiply, but probably divide, every single time the number in front of the x to get x by itself. All right? Multiply those values by 100, and that will give you the percentage of acetone, percentage of cyclohexane in the sample. When you find one, subtract it from 100 to get the other half, okay? The same thing would happen with cyclohexane and toluene down here at the bottom. You would take that refractive index, plug it in. This refractive index, plug it in. That's your two-component system. Solve for x times 100. That will give you the percentage of cyclohexane, if that's the one that you used for A. Subtract 100 from it, and that will give you the percentage for toluene in that mix. Now, how do I know when the cap is? How do I know when to switch it over? Well, if my vial was 1.4463, well, 1.4463 does not come in between 1.35 and 1.42, right? So that probably is a very good sign that now I'm working with a container that doesn't have acetone and cyclohexane mix. It probably has a cyclohexane and toluene mix instead. So look at your refractive indexes. Use a little bit of common sense to figure out where this jump will happen throughout your fractions. So the pre-lab questions is probably going to ask you to solve one of these equations. That's how you do it because this is what you'll need for your spreadsheet later on uh, when we talk about those calculations. So again, good luck in the lab. Uh, it might be a little bit longer to do the spreadsheet and calculations for this one than it will the actual lab itself. But you'll get through it and you'll have fun doing it and you'll probably cuss me at the same time.